to all and to our question of the day from Kat. Like your name? Yeah. Uh, sorry it took me a few days to get back to you. I'm actually on vacation, you guys. Um, and yes, I'm still doing a video from vacation, but that's what's cool about this job. So, uh, her question, first of all, she gives us praise on our fantastic videos. Thank you so much, Kat. I'm a fan of you too. And uh, she's got a couple questions. Uh, first question, how do I close a bank account in QB 2013? And then basically the scenario, long story short, books haven't been reconciled since August. Everything's all messed up uh, with you know cash reconciliation. Um, so we're going to basically tackle it and I'll address one question at a time as we tackle it. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have QuickBooks 2013. Uh, right now with me while I'm on vacation. I left it back home. I uh, wasn't anticipating doing any videos, but I just had to do one for you, Cat Kitty. Love that. All right. So I'm going to go over to QuickBooks 2009. Okay. It's still the same accounting principles, just a different look and feel on the software. Okay. So let's go over. So we are in QuickBooks and I went to our chart of accounts. It's usually under company chart of accounts and you have your bank over here now you wanted to close it here's the problem you're running into there is no way you can close a bank account once it's been used so if I right click and I hit delete you cannot delete an item that has sub items delete or move the sub items first so uh, you know once again once it's got things tied to it you cannot delete it same thing if I go to checking one delete account problem Cannot delete this account because it has a balance or has been used at least in one transaction. So the best you could really do at this point is make an active. And even you saw over here where you want to delete account, it said made an active right over here. That's really the best you can do. I'm not going to go ahead and do it in this example, but that's it. Once you make something inactive, it won't show. But of course, you can always re you know make it active again by coming over here and uh, showing inactive items. Okay. So that takes care of your first part of the question. Let's move on to number two. So second question, it's a pretty long multiple part question, but uh, as complicated as it sounds, I think I can kind of really um, compress everything and make it simple for you. It says, I have entered AR invoices and received payments. I have bank statements that I am trying to match, make deposits. The owner would take cash from cash payments received by customers and the bookkeeper was to keep track of the cash taken. She didn't and since there's no longer around, I have no one to ask and the owner doesn't remember. And so on and so on. Basically, the company brought in money uh, partially through cash and it just wasn't uh, handled the right way. So now everything's confusing and you guys don't know what to do. Uh, so let's go over to QuickBooks and kind of let me show you where to start with uh, this problem over here. Okay, so we're in QuickBooks. Uh, first thing I want to tell you that there is no real cookie cutter way of doing this. And a lot of accounting, you'll kind of find that to where you do have maybe two ways, three ways of doing something. But usually there might be the one more preferable way of doing it. So this is my way of tackling this problem over here. We're in chart of accounts. First thing I want to make sure that I have a, uh, an, a bank account called Petty Cash. Okay, so if you don't have one, set up a type is bank account called Petty Cash. Next thing you should have in there is something with equity. Here we go. We have owner's draw, owner's equity. Okay, so once I have these, one of these over here and the petty cash, uh, then we can go ahead and actually do some entries and I'll tell you what the next entry is. Next step is receiving all the payments from the customers. So let's just go ahead and do that alone and let's not commingle everything. So customers receive payments, customer one, for example, I'm going to choose this is what they gave me cash was this $500 and where am I going to deposit it to? That's right, petty cash. 
Don't deposit it to the bank account. Even if the owner took some of that money and deposited it to the bank account, don't do that yet. Everything received from the customer that you got cash, just put into this account called petty cash or cash received from customers, whatever. Okay, the idea is you don't want to combine them right now, you just want to leave it as is. So, right now, you're recording all the sales, petty cash. That's it. Hit save and close. All right, next step we want to record all the money that went from petty cash into the actual bank account to match it and you're going to do that through a journal entry customer create journal entry oh not customer excuse me company <laughs> hello see i'm on vacation you guys okay so take it easy on me uh, so we're in journal entry make a journal entry so the first account I'm going to do is back to our petty cash. And I will go ahead and credit it. Now, I know he doesn't remember exactly what he took what, but it's very simple. When you look at your bank statement, whatever you have left to reconcile for the cash, that's basically what you're going to put. It's the best guess that you can take right now as far as that's concerned and that's the only way you're going to reconcile it anyway. So if you're, for example, $1,000 short in the bank account, then you're going to credit petty cash 1000 and you're going to debit the checking account. You can make your memos and all that kind of stuff. Hit save and close. And that brings us back to the chart of accounts. I'm going to go under checking one where I put that debit in there. And you'll see at the bottom over here that now I have $1,000 more in my bank account. So if you were $1,000 short, now you have $1,000 more. You can now reconcile the bank account. And that takes care of that problem. I'm going to then close out of here. Back to chart of accounts. Obviously, in the petty cash, you should have $1,000 less now. And basically, the way this works with petty cash is you can pretty much save it for tax season where you would do a journal entry from petty cash to where is our equity. And that could be the owner's draw right there. And that's why you want to have these two accounts. You could do it month to month. You could do it once a year. It also depends whether you're a corporation. It depends whether you're a sole proprietor. If you're a sole proprietor, you don't even really look at the balance sheet for tax purposes. Uh, only if you're a corporation or LLC. So, in the you know, in a nutshell, this is how you take care of the A B problem as easy and as clean as possible. Yeah, there's much more detailed ways you can probably go about it, but the end number is going to basically be the same. And uh, this is my recommendation. So. I hope you guys uh, have learned something today, enjoyed this video, I'm back to my vacation, uh, sipping on some mojitos, alright? Take care you guys.